Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzard Kay, and today we are going to look at an unsolved mystery of four girls known as the Flora Girls who died in a fire. This story is inspired by none other than a former undercover detective Perry Freeman, otherwise known as Cop Facts. So let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me today. First, we're going to look at this video and then we'll go over the timeline and just explain a little bit more. But the video already explains quite a bit. So let's get started on that. If you drove past this house before November 21st, 2016, you'd probably see four little faces smiling back. They were so joyous. They were very happy girls. You would have never, I, I never seen them not smiling. Um, uh, always on the front porch, waving at everybody that went by. They didn't know a stranger. Now this house is the site of a mystery. Kiani, Cariel, Kiara, and Kiana died in a fire in this house. Immediately after, the state fire marshal said they did not suspect foul play. But about two months later, a stunning announcement via email. Investigators now label the case arson. The girl's mom was the only survivor. For me to be right here today, it is just so hard. It's so hard. But as I continue to teach my daughter, you gotta keep fighting. You gotta keep fighting. Fight they did. The community created a cookbook and raised money, hoping it would draw out someone who knew something. People in Flora held a vigil on the one-year anniversary of the fire, but that night the state police did not release a suspect or a description. As long as I'm breathing air, we're going to stay here. So we'll continue to move forward. We'll continue to, 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 to drive and to drive and to drive and to talk and to talk and to talk. That month, the Carroll County prosecutor announced he would step down and the Flora fire chief resigned. But state police superintendent Doug Carter says they'll be there until the case is solved. I'm as frustrated as anybody is. I hope that one day um, that I can look into the eyes of, of, of at least two killers from a very small community in Indiana. Oh my word. And this case is now, let me just put this off for a second. Five years later, still unsolved. Can you believe it? So if I tell you a little bit about it, I mean, this article it's from 2020. So we've got to keep the case alive. I mean, it's still unsolved. More than three years ago, so now five years ago, a mom lost all her daughters. A house fire that gutted the home also resulted in the death of four girls aged five to 11. The mom survived and the search for, the, for answers continues. If you drove past the corner house at Columbia Division Streets before November 21st, 2016, you'd probably see four little faces smiling back. They were so joyous, said Kathy Clendening, one of the women who helped create a cookbook to raise funds for the family after the fire. They were very happy girls. I never seen them not smiling, always on the front porch, waving at everybody that went by. They didn't know a stranger. Now the house is the site of a mystery. Keone, Keriel, Kiara and Kiana died in a fire in this house. Immediately after, the state fire marshal's office said it did not suspect foul play. But two months later, a stunning announcement via email, investigators now labeled the case as arson. The girl's mom was the only survivor. For me to be right here today, it's just so hard, it's just so hard, said Tracy Rose, the victim's grandfather. So that man you saw speaking, it's the victim's grandfather. But as I continue to teach my daughter, you got to keep fighting. Okay. And fight they did. So, um, the timeline on event, of events, November 21st, 2016. Keone, Cariel, Kiara, and Kiana are killed in the fire. A day later, the fire is ruled undetermined. January 28th, 2017, the state fire marshal says the fire was intentionally set. 
May 25th, 2017, the fire is ruled intentional by Homeland Security and a new ISP detective takes over the case. June 23rd, 2017, the Carroll County prosecutor asks investigators not to release info. June 26th, 2017, a fire investigator with the Indiana State Fire Marshal's office resigns after questions about, inve about the investigation arise. On August 26, 2017, a new reward poster is released. November 11, 2017, Carroll County Prosecutor Rob Ives announces he's stepping down. January 1, 2018, new prosecutor Nicholas McClelland takes the post. And January 8, 2018, Todd Trent is named the new fire chief in Flora. Okay, what happened remains a secret. The biggest mystery in Flora lies inside the corner house. State investigators have said the fire that killed the girls was arson. But what exactly happened is shrouded in secrecy. A man named Vic uh, Mike Vergon is one of the people who has been inside the house since the fire. He runs his own fire investigation company. He was hired by the mom of the four girls and her attorney. He has not worked with them for months, but said he still thinks about the house and the case often. Let's see what this. Um... There are so many questions about the Flora fire. And so few people who can answer them. One of those people may be fire investigator Mike Vergon. So you believe the fire was an arson? Yes. It was set intentionally? Yes. Do you think the goal was to kill the children? I don't think so. I don't think so. Vergon spent more than 15 years as a certified fire investigator with the ATF before starting his own company. He was hired by the four girls mom and her attorney to find out what happened. Vergon has been to more than 1,000 fire scenes and investigated this one just weeks after it happened. There are still things he doesn't want to share. Where I thought the fire started is where it started. And that is where? Uh, I can't really say right now because... He says if there's a chance to solve the case, they need to keep some details secret so they'll mm -hmm. know they have the right person. Do you think that absolutely everything is being done to bring justice in this case? I don't know. That's hard to say. What he thinks would help is getting help. I don't think it hurt to call all the agencies in. It never hurts to have a fresh set of eyes look at something. And, uh, and share all of the information, not just some of the information. The case has already been reviewed by state police, the state fire marshal, and the Indianapolis Fire Department. But Vergon thinks more fresh eyes will be needed for the case to be solved. He also wants the family to know people still care. I just hope someday there's an answer. Breaking news, four people are... Oh, my word. <laughs> Breaking news. Um, okay, so we got that. It's so weird how you can't say where the fire started because he's like, I uh, can't say right now. Why? What? So Vergon spent more than 15 years as a certified fire investigator, investigator with the ATF before starting his own company. He has been to more than 1,000 fire scenes and investigated this one just weeks after it happened. There are still things he doesn't want to share. Okay. Wow. I can't believe he can't say where the fire started. Where did it start that's so suspicious, huh? What? The case has already been reviewed by Indiana State Police, the State Fire Marshal, and the Indianapolis Fire Department. However, Vergon thinks more fresh eyes will be needed for the case to be solved. The girl's mother has filed a federal wrongful death lawsuit against their landlord, claiming there were no working smoke detectors. I team 8 reached out to the mother for an interview, but she declined based on the advice of her attorney. Are we feeling a red flag about the landlord? Interesting. The Flora community is finding new ways to keep their people safe as they look back to the tragic loss of the four girls. The town of Flora came together after the loss of four sisters. Every year they still gather to place flowers on the home's porch in remembrance. It was a shock to the town. I mean, because these four little girls would always step outside and wave at you when you was going by. They were on a cheerleading um, squad. 
they were beautiful little girls. And I can't imagine somebody doing this to them. Many people rallied around fundraisers like Flora's Four Angels cookbooks. We have raised uh, 20000 That money is supposed to go to anyone who can help lead to an arrest or the town if no answers come by 2025. The family's moved away, the fundraising has died down, and hope is fading that answers will ever come. As long as it's been, I don't think anybody will come forward. I'm hoping there is, but I don't think, I think it's too late. But that doesn't mean what happened to the girls has been forgotten. As the investigation continues, the house still stands on the town's main street, boarded up and charred, serving as a daily reminder of tragedy. You'd be very hard pressed to find one person in the town of Flora that doesn't want to figure out what happened to the girls, that's for sure. I mean, hmm. everybody still is working to, to try to, to solve this, this mystery and all that, you know, and what happened. And, and uh, I think we'll get there. Carroll County Councilman Ethan Brown runs a restaurant just down the street from the home. He says ever since the Flora arson and homicide in neighboring Delphi, they've been working hard to ensure yet another tragedy doesn't happen this close to home. Have something horrible like this, I mean, it, this stuff never happens here. And to have it happen back to back with the Delphi murders is just, it, it's horrible. And of course the Delphi murders grabbed the public's attention, as we all know, Unfortunately, this case didn't. I don't know, have you ever heard about this case? Very few people have heard about this case. I'm so glad that Copfax is covering it. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, I just quickly want to go down here. Where the investigation stands. India, Indiana State Police is leading the investigation. I-Team 8's Richard Essex recently sat down with ISP Superintendent Doug Carter. Carter says that detectives have not completely cleared anyone in the case and that they are still following tips and re-examining evidence. Flora has been, very personal, has been a very personal matter to me. There are many people that probably don't believe that's the case. I have a rock over there. I see those four little girls' names every day. I believe that case is solvable, but we have got to be able to talk to everybody involved, said Carter. Carter would not talk to News 8 about any specific evidence that has been collected. <gasps> what is the evidence, guys? Oh my goodness, so still no answers, five years. So this was an article from now, November 21st, so let me show you this quickly. Today marks five years since four young sisters were killed in a Flora house fire. The fire was ultimately ruled an arson, but since that time the case remains unsolved. As News 18 Samantha Tiki reports, many questions remain among the community members and the leader of the state's NAACP. November 21st is a dark day in the Carroll County town of Flora. The loss of life of little girls were just devastating. Five years ago, sisters five-year-old Kiani Welch, seven-year-old Carrie L. McDonald, nine-year-old Kiara Phillips, and 11-year-old Kiana Davis were killed when their house caught fire. Their mother, Galen Rose, was the only one to make it out of the burning home. Cassandra Hammond's business is across the street from where the burnt-out home still stands. Just is a very sad reminder of what took place in that house and the devastation that those girls must have went through. The fire was ruled an arson in January of 2017. Even though half a decade has passed, the case remains unsolved. It's very difficult to believe that um, nobody knows. That this just you know fell into a black hole or something. Indiana NAACP State Conference President Barbara Bowling Williams says they've been trying to help with the investigation. You would think that a crime of this magnitude would not let people um, who have the power to um, find out what happened rest. Bowling Williams says the NAACP reaches out to law enforcement regularly to follow up. She says investigators continue to stay tight-lipped. After all these years, why can't you discuss it in details? Perhaps using the media might help um, continue to shine some light on it and to, to get some resolution. If nothing else, these children, these girls need some peace. They need some resolution. Until that time comes, Hammond says the house is just a reminder of a tragic crime that hasn't been solved. Hope that they find out the truth and that the girls get the justice that they deserve. Samantha Tiki, News 18. Indiana State Police Sergeant Jeremy Pierce told News 18 there were no updates to share on the investigation. There's a $5,000 reward for anyone with information that could lead to an arrest if you know anything. 
you're asked to call 1-800-382-4628. Today marks five years since four Okay, so I will put that number in the description box as well, just so that you guys have it. What a terrible case and just no answers whatsoever. Five years later. They said the loss of life of the little girls was just devastating, said Flora business owner Cassandra Hammond. Five years ago, sisters, five-year-old Keani Welch, seven-year-old Carrielle McDonald, nine-year-old Kiara Phillips, and 11-year-old Kiana Davis were killed when their house caught fire. Their mother, Galen Rose, was the only one to make it out of the burning home. Cassandra Hammond's business is across the street from where the fire-damaged home still stands. It's just a very sad reminder of what took place in that house and the devastation that those girls must have went through. The fire was ruled in arson in January of 2017, and even though half a decade has passed, five years have passed, the case remains unsolved. I mean, what? Okay, and now we go on to the man, the legend who inspired me to cover this case. Perry Freeman, otherwise known as Cop Facts. I'm going to link his channel below. Please go and show his video on this case some love. He's very passionate about covering cases like this that don't meet the light of day. Like, we need to shine a light on these cases um, as well. So let me show you this quickly. Perry's been on the show a number of times. Yeah, so if you don't know who he is, please go check out my guest's um, playlist and then you'll see. Well, I'm here again with uh, more questions. Mm -hmm. I've always got questions. Uh, we love Perry's questions. Uh, several of you have asked uh, why I don't do more videos. Um, I'll explain that in a little bit. But um, I promised somebody that I would do one today. So this is what I've been wanting to do for the last few days. And I finally found the time to, uh, to do this video. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask the first question of what happened about five years ago what's an unsolved crime from like five years ago mm. i'm sure a lot of you will say the delphi abby and libby well that's close that'll be in february coming up but in november uh november 21st of 2016 so we're coming up on five years here in just a few days the Flora girls died in a house fire in Flora, Carroll County, Indiana. Same county as the Delphi girls. So, makes us wonder what's going on in that county, eh? So, I understand that, um, you know, the Delphi case has got a lot of attention with the bridge guy all that. Other cases get a lot of attention. You know, the Gabby case, the Moab girls, um, several other cases get a lot of YouTube footage, time, whatever you want to call it. But for some reason, the Flora girls don't get that kind of uh, coverage. And we're talking about four young girls, Kiana, Kiara, Carriel and Keone died November 21st, 2016. Almost five years ago. Now, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in the Carroll County law enforcement um, organizations. I, um, I do have faith in the uh, Indiana State Patrol, I think. I still have faith in them, confidence in them. But um, speaking of the house fire, let me just start out by saying that the local authorities, the fire chief and the local regional fire uh, arson inspector or fire inspector decided, um, called it a natural uh, fire, an accidental fire. So it was an accidental death of the four girls. Well, lo and behold, not long after that, an outside arson investigator comes in and he determines that there was a, a accelerants in the house, which means the house was torched. It was an arson. 
Now, I would love it if you can go and check out the rest of Copfax's um, episode so that you can get him the views and him the love. Please go give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. <laughs> Even if you say, hi, I'm here from Grizzly. Um, I know a lot of you guys do that on other channels. I love it. I love seeing all the Grizzlies in other chats. Um, that's amazing. Thank you so much. But please go and check out this episode. It's very informative. I showed you now three minutes out of 11 minutes, 37 seconds. So I hope you'll go check that out. I will link it below, as I've said. Okay, so let me know in the comments below what you think of this case. I think it's terrible if it's four little girls killed in a home and they're like, Mwah. natural causes, just a fire. And then later, two months later, they're like, oh my word, it's arson. Actually, it's arson. And now it's all like hush hush. They can't really say, they can't release details, but like five years later, what? We're like, what, 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 right? So. Um, it is my honor to shine a light on this case. Let's start talking about this case. Let's start squeaking that wheel. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? <laughs> We've got to squeak it up on this channel. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think this channel is the squeaky wheel. <laughs> I like to do that and make sure that we're the squeaky wheel. Me and this community. Keep the pressure on like in the Daniel Robinson case. Keep the pressure on like Buckeye police. We're watching you. Mm, what are you going to do now? Mm, we heard you quite, um, oh, I shouldn't say too much, lazy, just like shrugging it off, just like, it's nothing. Um, okay, we're all watching you now. 34,000 Grizzlies are watching the Buckeye Police Department. Okay, so keep that squeaky wheel squeaking along. We got to squeak this thing up. Same with the Flora Girls, okay? Same with the other cases we cover got to squeak that wheel right up. So thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Remember, whenever you hit the thumbs up on my channel, it's not like, yeah, I like murder cases or whatever. It's not about the, the content because I, I know that sometimes the content can be upsetting, right? But it's that you like how I cover the cases. That's what you're hitting the thumbs up for. And um, of course, subscribe, become part of the community. Um, it's a great community. It's always nice to have you officially part of all of us, to see you in the chats, to see familiar faces, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. One more thing, please go check out my highlights. I'm going to put this on my highlights channel as well. I have a second channel, Grizzly True Crime Highlights. So head on over there, subscribe, so that if you don't have time to watch these full episodes, you can just head over there and watch the five-minute um, recaps or highlights. Okay, see you in the next one.